Hey guys, Seb here again. Thank you so much for all those birthday wishes. I felt loved and I felt appreciated. Thank you for making me feel special. Well, 44 feeling 24 and guess what? I just wanted to make myself feel a little bit cheeky today. So I thought I'm gonna give you a bit of an insight into a very, very special cheeky dessert that I love doing. And these waffles are just a treat at my house. So I'm not gonna actually teach you how to make the waffle itself or what goes in it. So I'm gonna do a couple of little cheeky treats for you. One, I'm gonna do a cherry gel, a little cherry chili gel to go at the bottom. I'm gonna do like a quick version of a chocolate whip, like a chocolate whip ice cream, so to speak. And then I'm gonna do like a nice cookie crumb that's gonna go with it, some fresh raspberries. And let's see where this takes us, all right? So keep watching. For the main event, the chocolate creamy ice cream, here's what you're gonna need. I'm gonna actually use a recipe that's gonna be using an ice cream churner, and I'm gonna show you how to churn the ice cream. So for the base, you've gotta make an anglaise. So what I've done is I've got 600 grams of cream, to which I'm gonna be adding about 75 grams of chocolate buttons, which I'm gonna actually bring to the boil. And then once it's actually nice and hot, I've got to be very, very careful with this. So I'm just going to make sure that I really don't want the milk to just get too hot. I just want to melt the chocolate. That's all I'm going to do. So you want to be very gentle with this. Once the chocolate starts to melt, we're going to add about 63 grams of cocoa powder. This is actually Dutch unprocessed, unsweetened cocoa powder. So you want to just bring this to the boil. Come have a look. So you just want to just get it to about, say, simmering temperature. Wait for the actual chocolate buttons to get nice and soft. And you can straight away see there's a bit of a melt happening right there. So once you get to that stage, and you can see it's getting a bit warm, you want to add your cocoa powder in. And you just want to make sure you whisk. If you'd like to, you can actually turn from a spatula to a whisk if you'd like. And just whisk, whisk or melt until it gets into a really nice smooth homogenous mix. Okay, my chocolate cream is ready. I've just brought it just under boiling. The chocolate buttons have melted. The cream is perfect, yummo. So my next step, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna use four egg yolks and I'm just gonna whisk that with about 75 grams of castor sugar. And what you wanna really do is, what I'm essentially doing guys, is I'm just making a chocolate anglaise. So all I'm gonna do is whisk until the egg yolks and the sugar get really pale. And have a look. So once they actually get really pale, I'm actually gonna add this to the chocolate cream. And that's when you're gonna slowly bring that on glaze to a little about 75 to about 85 degrees Celsius. You gotta watch, be very careful there. And once you've got to that stage, be very careful because you don't want the eggs to actually curdle. So you want to whisk, whisk, whisk. Once it's nice and pale, you want to add a bit of that mix to the actual egg yolks and the sugar. Therefore, you start to just bring these two mixtures together. It's kind of like a tempering, isn't it? You're kind of like just getting the temperatures right. And add that slowly by slowly until you actually get the eggs, not very rapidly though, very slowly to temperature. Now you add the rest of the ingredients to it. And be very careful because you don't want the cream to be really at boiling temperature because what's gonna happen? the egg is going to curdle. So once you've done that bit, feel it. So it's not very, very, very hot. And once you whisk that in, you now can bring this back to the pot, just like that. Use your spatula just to get all that beautiful chocolatey goodness. And now we're going to bring these 
ice cream base as we call it to a gentle I would say 83 to 85 degrees you got to watch though because you have got chocolate in there as long as it's nice and thick but not curdled you bring this back to the heat and now keep stirring very very gently until the mix gets really thick what really happens it's the eggs the protein strands in the egg that actually start to stretch and expand and start to thicken and you see how i've got a really nice spatula just to keep moving that heat very gently so it never gets caught at the bottom watch very closely and after some time you'll notice it's just going to get thicker and thicker and thicker and that liquid's going to be perfect for my ice cream churning Okay, so for my chocolate cookie crumbs, it's a very, very easy recipe. I've got 155 grams of softened butter there that's unsalted. I've got brown sugar that's about 140 grams. I've got 85 grams of normal cast sugar as well, which I'm gonna to add to this. And I'm gonna to start to cream this. You want to cream this until it gets nice and smooth. So I've added about 70 grams of egg. Okay, so I've just got three more ingredients to add. I've got about close to 240 grams of flour that I'm going to add very, very slowly and just pulse in low speed. And once you've added that, you want to add about five grams of bicarb of soda or baking soda. And then finally your 80 grams of unsweetened Dutch cocoa powder. Alrighty, so in goes the bicarb. And I'm just going to add a little bit of the unsweetened Dutch cocoa powder. And it's just going to resemble a nice little cookie dough, isn't it? Because what I'm really doing is converting this into a delicious cookie, chocolate cookie crumbs to go with the actual final whipped chocolate ice cream. Okay, so to repeat what I've just done, guys, I've actually had the butter, I've had the sugar, I've actually then added the eggs, then I've added the flour, the bicarb or the baking soda, and finally the cocoa powder, and this is what I have in the end. This is a nice looking mix, ready to make my chocolate cookie crumbs. All right, so take the mix, do whatever you want to do with it, and all you want to do is just press it really flat until you get about, say, about five mil in thickness, so you can actually represent a really crummy like texture so you can use another little um, baking paper over it and just press it really hard until it gets nice and flat and thin okay it's ready to go in the oven at about 165 degrees for about 50 to 20 minutes max okay so for the actual crushed hazelnut praline it's going to add a bit of crunch to it you can omit this recipe or this section of the recipe if you have got a nut allergy but I love this because it really gets the kids to do a bit of a DIY. They're gonna just build their waffles with various kinds of elements. So I've got about 150 grams of actually toasted, de-skinned hazelnuts that I'm actually just chopping really roughly to actually add to my praline. And for the praline, I've got 150 grams of cast sugar. You wanna just add a little bit of water to it and then bring it to the boil just when it starts to turn golden brown. You wanna take it off the heat, you wanna add the nuts and make sure you've got one of these trays, baking trays ready with lining paper uh, before you actually get your sugar recipe out of the way because as soon as that praline is ready, you want a flat surface to pour on. Hence the reason why I have one of these trays ready with the lining to go. Okay, you can actually see as you look at the color of the sugar, it's turned amazingly into this beautiful toffee color. You want to wait for it just to turn a bit more. Be careful. Be very careful because it is very, very hot. I'm not overly stirring, but just to make sure that the sugar is evenly dispensed. And you will straight away see the color 
getting into this toffee brown goodness. So you just want to be patient with this. This moves really, really quickly. So you want to pay attention to this and don't leave this on the stove. So just a bit more color. Wow, look at that. That is just amazing. All right, I can see it change right in front of my eyes. Look at that. That's it. Now once it reaches that color, you want to add your hazelnuts in and mix. And then pour that onto your tray, which I'm gonna do right here. There you go. Spread that if you want. You can even use another baking paper over it and press it if you want to, or while it's really, really pliable, you just want to press it so it gets into this really nice thin layer that you can break for later. And that's it, there you have it. So now I'm gonna move on to the next thing, which is this fantastic, yummy cherry chili jam. So let me show you what I'm doing so far. So I've got about 300 grams of pitted morello cherries. And to that, I'm actually gonna add about 20 grams of icing sugar. And I'm just gonna start bringing this to the boil. Remember, I've actually reserved about close to 80 mils of the liquid as well in which it was actually preserved. So cherries are actually very seasonal in Melbourne. So I end up always using tinned cherries if I have to, and that's why the liquid is great. It actually helps give it texture for me to liquidify and to turn it into a nice little gel. So the next thing I want to add is I've got a bit of agar agar, and those of you who are vegetarian, it's actually great to actually use. A lot of chefs use all kinds of various things to thicken it, but I'm just using about five grams. And all I'm doing is just mixing that with the um, cherry juice that I've got, or the preserving liquid. And all I'm doing is actually just adding that to the recipe and bring this to a boil. So that's as simple as that. So you want to bring this to the boil until the cherries just start to break apart. And then it takes about close to say 25 to 30 minutes. And then you just blitz that. Okay, my cherry gel is ready. There's one thing left to do is to add some Aleppo chili. So I'm just going to add a little pinch to it. I like a little bit of chili, let's be careful. Kids are eating this, so you want to cut back on the chili. Just mix it up. Once it's ready, you just put it into a little piping bag, bread to pipe into your waffle cone. Okay, so my chocolate omelette is ready. It's been sitting in the fridge for about four hours, and it's looking absolutely yum. So what I've got to do now is I'm going to churn it. So I've got this ice cream churner. It's got a built-in compressor. It's perfect. It does about close to 1.7 liters of actually ice cream. Remember though, when you're going to use uh, an ice cream machine like this, you don't want to fill the top because it is going to incorporate air. So what I've got is roughly about 800 mils. I may not use all of it for my first churn, but let me show you how I do this. All I'm doing gently now is just pouring the anglaise mix into the actual compartment. And straight away you can see the temperature is about minus 36. So it's really cold in there, eh? So all I've got to do there is leave for about 20 minutes and this will churn into a beautiful dark chocolate ice cream. Okay, so everything is coming together. I've got the ice cream churning away. I've got the cherry chili jam that's good to go. I've got some beautiful fresh Aussie raspberries as well to give it a nice adornment at the final flourish. And then I've got this hazelnut praline that I made. So all I'm doing now is just giving it a chop so it really fits into the actual waffle. And I'm just gonna get that ready. Oh my goodness, that is, oh, delicious, yum. And that's exactly what I wanted. I wanna create a bit of theater. So you can actually build the waffle with a bit of chocolate, with the ice cream, with the raspberries. And that's really what I wanna do. So, just one more thing to go. I've got this cookie crumb, the chocolate cookie crumb that I made. And all I'm doing is now just, oh, look at that. That looks so good, eh? That looks so good. So all I'm doing is just breaking it up with my hands. And I'm just going to put it into the blitzer. And I'm just gonna blend it into a fine crumb. chocolate crumb is ready. Now if you've got leftovers like these, what I normally do is I just chop them up into bite-sized biscuits for the kids. 
and they can actually have it with a bit of milk or whatever it's beautiful really nice so don't waste it or you can just turn it into more from if you want to look at that beautiful little biscuit sized pieces or bite sized pieces and good to go okay so i've been waiting all day to do this my ice cream is churned it's good to go i've got all my elements ready so here it is folks i've got my homemade home churned chocolate ice cream into a waffle cone with a bit of goodies. So let's do this. So the first thing that I want to do really is grab your waffle cone and you want to pipe the cherry chili jam at the base. So I'm just going to do that for a couple of them so the boys are actually salivating. Now what I'm going to do is put in a bit of praline. So have some fun with this. You can get the kids involved if you wanted to. Um, there you go. So I've got a bit of the uh, praline at the bottom. <clears throat> and then the next thing you want to really do is you want to put in your ice cream. So I'm just going to keep this good to go and I'm going to start to scoop. Now I've got a bit of hot water there, have my scoop ready uh, and look at this. Oh, ho, ho, ho. the ice cream is looking absolutely fun. So I'm just going to just put that in. There you go. That's the first scoop there. <coughs> and I'm going to do a few more. And once I've done that, that's the first one for you. So then you want to put a, put a, that, put a bit of chocolate sauce on top. Oh, that looks so fun. A couple of raspberries just to adorn the side. And then your cookie crumb just to sit on top of that. Look at that. That is just divine. Hale, do you want one? There you go, mate. Enjoy. So I'll do a few more. Okay, folks, so there you have it. I have made this and I am salivating. I just need to eat this. So, guess what? This is a cool recipe. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you like it and I hope you share it with your friends. I'm going to ensure that all this information is available for you as well. Enjoy and have a great day and thank you for watching, everybody.